Blooper. Yeah, be cautious, my friends. You gotta be cautious. <laughs> well done, producer. Well done, producer. Yeah. All, all only just earn one. Imagine thirty minutes. <laughs> 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 Hey guys, welcome to Financial Fitness JA. I'm Julio Dawkins. And I'm Jane Harrison. And today we have a very special guest. He's an entertainment manager. He's an electrical engineer. He's also a label exec. His current role is that he's the manager of Kabaka Pyramid and director of Baby Rock Music. He's also a representative of Ghetto Youth um, label as well. Um, he's a past student of the University of West Indies and Camden College, right? In his spare time, he loves jogging, playing football, right? And most importantly, he has many accolades that he's going to tell us about and and also what is going on in the business of music guys today the business of music proud to welcome doing madonna bless up bless up good to be here give yeah, thanks for inviting me welcome you know I mean? sir welcome yeah, sir yo yeah. um you know um not to not to really beat around the bushes but give us an idea of, of who you are and and your journey yeah so um yeah doing madonna you know I am a positive human being looking to contribute to this earth. Sure. So I um, kind of like to set it away there. In terms of what I do, I'm an electrical engineer, as mentioned, a label executive, entertainment manager, uh, audio engineer as well, production manager. So at least you have to explain to us. <laughs> yeah, man, you want to explain now? No, but you can. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, wear, I wear many hats within the realm of music and engineering in general. Mm -hmm. you know? So like a liberty? Mm -hmm. No, but you know this business you have to kinda of be aware of how to So what you telling you're pivoting from the long time. That thing that's a pivot. Me pick up, me pick up as a go on. Me pick up as a go on. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm also the vice chairman of um, Jamaica Reggae Industry Association. Right. Um mm -hmm. so you know yeah I play a lot of roles within the business and just just play my part, you know what I mean? So yeah. What led you to, because I know you never started out in music. No, no. So what led you to move from <laughs> your engineering hat to music? What what made you make that move? Well, I may try to be as succinct as possible. I mean, um, so while I went to engineering school in Trinidad, mm -hmm. uh, you, right? What kind of engineering? Electrical. Electrical and computer. Very good engineering. Yes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because so, when yeah. you say engineer at first, I was like, oh, it's a music engineer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. That's, that's yeah. true. Because engineer from friends are real, because an engineer will call people can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so, that's what I'm asking. Oh, no, 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 electrical yeah. engineer. Electrical yeah. engineer. So, I've got a degree in electrical engineering. Um, right. But during my electrical engineering degree, mm -hmm. I was also a DJ on campus. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, I did a bit of traveling doing that as well in Barbados and in place. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. You know what I mean? So, in terms of me playing a part as someone in in, in, in music. That mm -hmm. is where it starts during my engineering okay. degree. Of course before that in high school all of my bridging and you know song business and artists and everything like that. Mm -hmm. I was more uh, behind the scenes kind of person. But okay. when we go to university and start getting to that. When I came home now, a lot of the the friends and things that were in music, mm -hmm. you know, some of them weren't there anymore, some of them were still there but never had any place to record their music. So me and my business partner Abishai decided to build a studio. So the money would have a place to record. But we jump from just doing the shows to build an entire studio. No, I mean when you re when I reach home, you get the job and you have the nine to five on thing. Oh, oh say they have a nine to five. Oh, say they have a nine to five. Oh, yeah, so oh, yeah, so oh, yeah, 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 oh, ye
Where did you work then? Yeah, Linko Engineering, Linko so Linko a private Linko. consultancy okay. company, okay. You know, okay. building design and that kind of thing. Nice, oh, okay. nice, so nice, nice. Yeah, I was one of the work where they love music, man. <laughs> you have to love it. Tell them, no, tell them all the time. You have to love, have to love it. it. Yeah, no, there's no doubt about it. Difficult to make and maintain the steps. No, there's no doubt about it. So, yeah, I mean, whilst doing that, um, as I said, you know, our close bridge in them needed somewhere to record, mm -hmm. you know, so we decided to build a studio. And from there, that is where um, the man name started recording. And mm -hmm. it's not like we knew a lot about how to do it in terms of building studio and everything, but we teach yourself and build from there. So what we, what we talk a lot about here in, in financial is we have three, three main things that we talk about. Mm -hmm. One, budget. Mm -hmm. Two, save. Three, invest. Right. So how were you able to? One, budget. Two, save. And invest in your studio. How did you go about Well, all right. This is the thing, you know, because they're there. There's several of eras, so to speak, of, of development in the music. Mm -hmm. So that era was more of a free flow, like one, two, three. The, the man them need somewhere to record music. Mm -hmm. Let's build somewhere to record music mm -hmm. and growing at that. You know, at that time, we had a big rap group called Baby T, enough man, enough artists every day mm -hmm. um, by, the, by the studio. Mm -hmm. And then there was a transitional point now where so we formalized the structure now mm -hmm. to be more of a business. Yeah. So, you just, so just, you just start. You just start. You yeah. You come up with guys and you just start. Yeah, you understand? And there was a lot of talent, a lot of talented individuals yeah. around us. So we formalized this thing. Just start. And say, oh, just start. Yeah, yeah just yeah, start. Yeah, exactly, yeah. you know what I mean? As well as um, a little bit of, you know, kind of self-sufficiency. Mm -hmm. So we could we could have taken the route of the man I need somewhere to record. Let's go and rent studio time. Mm. That could have been a road that we take, take we well. took, you know what I mean? Um, but we decided to, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and they wasn't really thinking along the lines of budget and business, and it was more creatives mm. and look for expressing talent. You know, you know, know. Yeah, yeah, apply the principles, they yeah, avoid a fixed cost. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, we're all very young in you know, the whole recording business structure, traditionally. Mm -hmm. right. You know, we kind of came from that era that. Learn how to record yourself. Have a little okay, studio at home, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, your closet and internet and mm. fruity loops and okay, you know, we yeah, kind of yeah, grow out yeah, of yeah. that from okay. high school days coming now to that time, you know what I mean? So I mean time pass and thing and um we formalize the structure of Bebe Rock, you know what I mean? Um and then you know, as time passed there were certain people that kind of took it more on as a career. Some certain people that kind of fell out of loving it for whatever reason. So you say you might start with some people and necessarily finish, finish with the same. Yeah, not necessarily. I mean, people are individuals that grow. These are the gems yeah. in a class. Some people don't know this. They don't know that they mm -hmm. just need to start. Yeah. They don't, they don't necessarily, they're not going to have the perfect budget. They're not going to have the perfect plan. Right. 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 But you're actually going through the process. Right. And then not everybody will start with you and finish, finish with it. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Right. You know what I mean? So, and you might you might have a goal within what you're doing and you decide that this is not for me. Mm. You know what I mean? So and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You might grow and evolve into something else or to, to some other aspect of the business or a different business company. So where you find you get the most support? Was it family and friends or strangers? A lot of the times so, I see where people get a lot of support from no, strangers, strangers more than most of the time. And family and friends like believing in your dream that yo, I go to school and I'll be yeah. an engineer. And you leave and you say the music. Well, that's the thing, you know. You know what I said? It's, it's not that in this period, I never left my nine to five. So they do all this thing. Yeah, okay. so, you know, a lot of we were working and we were mm -hmm. doing nine to five. It was a situation okay. where you leave, you leave work at 5.30 or whenever, and you go into the studio every night. Oh, okay. And you're hitting the pavement with that okay. consistently, you know okay. what I mean? Okay. And it was just a kind of family energy within ourselves as you know call it the administration section and mm -hmm. the artist then the yeah. voice you know so it, it was very much all of us support each other for sure mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and you know there, there came a time now where there was kind of a, a separation not in any antagonistic way but mm -hmm. people kind of grow apart and creatively and everything like yeah. that um and kabaka was actually in florida and he came home and from there, we, we kind of took it a bit more seriously as it relates to, to Bebe Rock as a label and what we're setting out to do. Um, so I remember a point where Kabaka, myself and Abishai, mm -hmm. we decided that we're going to kind of formalize the label structure. 
you know. This is after, of course, years of, you know, the rap group and yeah. doing the thing, yeah. essentially. Yeah, because a lot of people out there don't know that Kabaka was a rapper. First. Yeah, Kabaka was a rapper. Like, <laughs> but, but straight from New York kind of rapper. The baddest thing, too. Yeah. Yeah. The baddest yeah, thing. Man, but the point, the point that you're making about when you're formalizing a thing, I come out of an interview with DJ Shanta, and mm-hmm. then, you know, you have to structure your thing, try it. The best way it would have been to structure your thing, you know, call a lawyer or whatever. Yeah. But it don't necessarily always work right. out that way. No, no, the no, first. Yeah. no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the, the, the proper thing to do, which is what we are working on, trying to mm-hmm. do it better. Right, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, you consult the lawyer, how you structure this. Mm-hmm. I figure it's very unique to um, music, music as well. Because yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. I mean, I mean, we, of course, had a perspective of the release to formalize and that kind of thing. But, you know, what we essentially did was we, you know, we formed the business name, registered the business mm-hmm. name, of course, right. you know, formed the joint account. Mm-hmm. And each of us put in a certain amount of money to say, all right, this is our initial commitment towards this initiative that we're moving to, yeah, you know, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. and that is how we kind of initiated a proper formal structure. I wanted know? to stop there. Mm-hmm. When when I consult, it's very rare that without advice that mm-hmm. people do that, especially for creatives. And I don't mean right. this in any this disadvantage. No, it's reality, to, reality. For creatives, yeah. I mean, so for creatives out there, I really wanted to listen to what he said. Mm-hmm. Formalize, register the company, as Chantal had said. The giant account, remember Jay, we spoke about the bank account. But my question is, same, same comment of the same thing that you just said. Mm-hmm. Is that structure still working for you well today? Yeah, or most definitely. To change to change? It's no, man, it's just it's working well for us today. I must say that, you know, the foundation of, of the relationship as bridges, mm-hmm. you know, because we, we know each other from 11 years old, mm-hmm. that certainly oh, helped right. to, to, to kind of you know, weather right. the storm as right. it comes to yeah. I mean, there are certain challenges with doing business with your, your close friends as well Definitely. that can't be ignored. But Definitely. certainly that, that foundation and, and, and that friendship, you know, ensured longevity. I guess that's the same reason why it works out. Definitely. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah, 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 very much so. So as mentioned, we pulled our money together to form the company, formalize the company, mm-hmm. you know, and essentially started to take a more business approach from there, you know, putting out mixtapes and songs, that kind of thing. Okay. And then there was a, in 2011, we put out Kabaka's EP, Rebel Music EP. Mm-hmm. And that essentially took the thing into a whole new realm, mm-hmm. you know, as it relates to international notoriety, mm-hmm. as it relates to building a core fan base locally as well, mm-hmm. and just painting Kabaka in a certain light within the people's minds. Mm-hmm. You know, so from there, you know, um, we got engagements to go overseas and perform. You know, our first tour was in 2012, actually, in Europe. You know, oh, so and that was even before many people knew Kabaka in Jamaica. You know, but we did a sound system tour in 2012. Mm-hmm. You know, a guy named Malte Eckert, sound system, went over there and toured with the sound system for break even. I'm pretty sure it's break even or a loss. But essentially exposing ourselves in the Euro market early. Right, right, you know? right. And from there, from the summer of 2012, we started to build our touring history, so to speak. Then. So you're you telling know? me that you had to make a sacrifice, you and your team had to make a sacrifice initially in order to give yourself that exposure. Yeah, it was certainly. Wasn't that money coming in right away? No, certainly. It's an it's a, it's a investment, you know, it's an opportunity to get your brand and your music into a market that you're not in right now. So it's a marketing cost. Yeah, of course. So they mean this not just an money opportunity pay. cost. They mean this sweat. Sweat equity. Yeah, it's no, no, you said money to money. Yeah, well, man. Well, I, mean, I mean, at that time, <laughs> myself and Abishai, we had our 9 to 5. You oh. know, Kabaka was doing various jobs as well. Mm-hmm. You know, and we are putting money back into the business. You know, so if we need to print 200 CDs to go out on the road at night time for that. Oh. Yeah, you understand? The light bill for the studio and, and they will get it twisted on this. So it was like a big studio that we're building. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll buy the monitors, we'll buy the mixing board, we pull together and buy the computer, you know, and that's what we're using to record the interface, all these things. Oh. You know, so we're pulling our money. So a lot of my pay and that thing was going into that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know. And then we evolved to the to the point where we started getting into live music, you know, which means band and rehearsals and that's a whole new paradigm for us, which had a financial implication as well, you know. 
So, but as I said, in 2012, that is when our touring culture started. You know, we got exposed to the Euro market. 2013, we did another larger tour. So the tour that we did in 2012 was more of a club, small, you know, sound system vibe kind of thing. 2013, now we got the opportunity to do a festival tour. Whoa. So that is performing at, at the big festival. Stadiums, so. awesome. I mean, at the time, it, you don't know we still have built the brand. Now. So how will you fund that? Though? How will you fund that? that kind of same, thing, same thing again? Well, no. We are at the point now where we build the name enough that we were being paid enough for these oh. festivals to pay for the cost. So, so initially you were bootstrapping. But bootstrapping is when you take your personal funds mm -hmm. and what, whatever is available, resources, time, mm -hmm. certain equity, everything. Mm -hmm. you, right. right. you reach the next step now. So yeah, yeah. but I mean, it still involves some level of bootstrapping because you're being booked for these festivals, but you're still a, a upcoming artist, mm -hmm. you're still far within that bracket, so you're not getting a big money. And they're not so, giving you any like accommodations, or no? I mean, generally, I mean, that's a whole other conversation between the tour <laughs> logistics, but generally, if you're going on tour, you're not necessarily being given accommodation for every show free, you know. Or you might be given accommodation but not transportation. Well, and this is a lot of us, so how you manage something like this? At this point, were you budgeting, or was it a tour budget? Yeah, it was a tour budget. It was a tour budget. Yeah, you know? tour so, budget. So, so, so you look on you know, the shows you're being booked for, mm -hmm. the expenses to get your visas, mm -hmm. transportation, accommodation for the shows that are not giving accommodation, mm -hmm. and you balance that with the ones you are getting accommodation for. You come up with your tour budget, or work at all. Easy, right? What's that to say? Budget. Budget. <laughs> yeah, budget. Budget. So your budget and then you save or put whatever for in your case it's not necessarily saving, right. but you accumulate whatever you need and look at the balance of what yeah. you have. I mean I mean there is for there's certain there's different levels to a tour budget thing. So of mm -hmm. course we're all Jamaican, our passport in terms oh, of priority right. in the world. Mm -hmm. You know? You know? Mm -hmm. So we need a work permit to do anything so we're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, so I vividly remember 2014, I believe, was the first time we got a work permit to go to the US to perform, mm -hmm. you know. And in order to get that work permit, the work permits, US work permits are very expensive. We have to put up our own money. In addition to that, we have to take a small loan. A small loan is actually from your cousin, mm -hmm. you know, a short-term business loan, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and essentially, pulling that funds could pay for, you know, the entertainment lawyer and all the fees involved in getting a work permit. Okay. And then the money that you earn on tour now, you balance that back. And you may break even or you look a bit under the red, but you can pay back off the loan. Right, right. And you know that your brand is now exposed in that market. Okay. So, you know, you all have to be thinking about what your vision is, what, what your goal is. You know, what do we need to do to achieve this goal? How much does it cost? And factor that into your budget. But that's such, a, plan. that's such an insightful point that sometimes you're going to have to get debt that initially. So that's a big issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. people they won't start anything you know, unless they feel they can fully fund it. Yeah, it doesn't really sense. work. So, I mean, in, in an ideal yeah. world, yeah, and for some people it does, mm -hmm. you know, but if you're on the grind and building slowly, mm -hmm. then there is some sacrifice that you're going to have to make. And I would, even, I would even want to go as far as say, in an ideal world. In an ideal world, they're going to need some debt. That's the reality. Yeah. I think that's how we need to shift the paradigm for people think that it's more likely that you're going to be able to self fund everything. Yeah, so no, that's sure. Likely. You're going to have to get some money and you're going to have to manage yourself because based on what you're saying, it's a lot of self management you're doing. You may not have a financial plan or whatever, but you're applying the principles well because that's a lot of budgeting. It's a yeah, lot of planning. Definitely. Definitely. And, planning and, and as you said, with the self assessment and self planning, mm -hmm. they were able to look at themselves and say, listen, in order for us to go to the next level. Yeah, invest in themselves. Uh, yeah, oh man, that is it. So, okay. Just a part of the thing. You know? Okay. That's an interesting story. Um, yeah, in man, I can get, get longer. <laughs> <but, laughs> from one step to the other. 